the cold chain. It protects temperature sensitive products like life saving pharmaceuticals. And maintaining cold chain quality is more important than ever. I'm Taylor Bennett on assignment for American Airlines. We are talking with the world's leading experts to answer the question what does it take to maintain product integrity in the cold chain? To answer that question, we began in Geneva at the World Health Organization. If you think of the whole supply chain from the manufacturing uh, start point till the end user, uh, the product is touched and handled by so many people uh, throughout this, this, this process. This starts with the, uh, you know, moving the product from the manufacturing facility to the forwarding agency and then what happens in the airport one company contracts another company and then there is subcontractors and so on so it this gets so complicated this can impact quality as dr rafiq bishara discussed with us in new york you mentioned several different partners in the supply chain how do they best work together and ensure proper collaboration the most important way to collaborate is communicate communicate and communicate it is very important that each partner in this supply chain and the global supply chain understands what is their role, what are their responsibilities. Inspecting quality at the end is too late because if I fail, the whole thing is destroyed. We went to Paris to gain perspectives on quality from Nina Hines. The biggest challenge that we face is really managing all the stakeholders involved in the supply chain. So these supply chains are very complex and it's very important for us to ensure that all supply chain partners along the supply chain are educated, know what their roles and responsibilities are, and are truly involved in making sure that the product reaches the patient in the best condition. Coordinating supply chain stakeholders requires collaboration. American Airlines Cargo's Tom Grubb explains. So one of the key pieces that I would say for collaboration is the ability for the forwarder, the, the pharmaceutical company, the carrier, and, and many other stakeholders to have a common conversation to ensure that end-to-end -end, um, the supply chain is, is maintaining the efficacy of the products. It seems that cold chain quality is not something that can be achieved alone by any one shipper, forwarder, or carrier. It demands a consistent, collective effort. And that means cold chain quality is as much about education as it is collaboration. Bob Gahan, D.B. Shanker, met with us at New York Kennedy Airport. The shipper will start the education process, let us know what the uh, temperature ranges should be, what the excursion parameters should be. Uh, they'll educate the, both the freight forwarder, um, the airline partner, um, all the stakeholders in the, in the cold chain. The more information that we can get about the commodities being shipped, um, and the sensitivities of those commodities, you know, any, any type of stability data helps us to understand what we need to do. With education comes understanding. But how does that support quality? We spoke with Kuna Nagel's Marcel Fujiki in Zurich. Forwarders and carriers always have kind of submitted a message towards the farm industry that we can do all. Whatever they require, we will deliver. If we look really into our own abilities, so far we have to admit we cannot. We need to get into a better information policy towards the farm industry, really getting them to understand and learn what we can really do and what we cannot do. So we have to make sure that we are delivering what we are promising and what is required by the industry. When a shipper is serious about a long-term relation to, to a forwarder or carrier, I would recommend visit the office, ask for proof of qualification, like what are they doing in regards to GDP? What are they doing in regards to training? Let them see the training records, see how they select carriers, how they select third parties like a trucker, or warehouses um, and see how they try to mitigate risk on the lane. Just as important is having procedures ready if plans fall through. It is very important that this is done in documentation and in that regard we have now what is known as the quality agreement. Quality agreement will be a document that specify who is doing what 
and also it will have a contingency plan if there is a breakdown in the system. Our time and temperature sensitive programs have contingency built into them. We minimize how much time product spends on the ramp, which uh, was one of the key uh, facets that we had to address when we developed our program. So we developed very short um, pull times from our terminals to the ramp, um, and likewise, both at destination for recovery or in the event of a, of a flight cancellation or some sort of weather delay, we have processes built into place uh, in the program that uh, will recover that material back into the warehouse as quickly as possible. Contingency planning is important for all shipments, but particularly those moving to emerging markets where cold chain challenges can multiply fast. We spoke with Carlos Castro in Dallas to learn more. Definitely in emerging markets, the, um, not every market is, is the same and not every country has the same regulations. So uh, it changed country to country. I think the work needs to be done there uh, where um, we try to standardize that process uh, and that has to do with customs, regulations, and I think that's where the freight forwarders, the carriers can help uh, to, to mitigate that risk. New markets mean new risks. We spoke with Wesley Wheeler and Ariat Van Streen in New York. We have great agents, we have great partners, uh, American Airlines being one of those, uh, to find the next available flight, to, to rent a truck, to rent a car, whatever it takes to get that sample across the mountain through the volcanic ash and through the fog. And I mean, that's, that's what we have to do. It's really understanding the infrastructure of each country. So a lot of regulatory education and getting the experts of the countries involved as well. First education is to understand, of course, your market and specialize yourself in that market and understand the growth and what that means. Secondly, is that you need to prepare yourself to find better solutions, so better ways, you know, to ship your drugs, to store them. So you, you think of optimized solutions. You need to have a better relationship with the regulatory agencies as well, absolutely. There are no shortcuts to cold chain quality. So in addition to what we provide today, part of the, the education piece and part of the, the knowledge that I take from having meetings with pharmaceutical companies and with forwarders is to be able to take that information back and learn what is the next step going to be in our program. We didn't set our program in place just to, to have it operate the way it is for years. We need our program to be evolutionary and to stay ahead of the curve. So obviously the end goal is to ensure that it's ready to take on the challenge of, of whatever that next product may be. So we have to expand uh, the possibilities of science and apply this into the systems like supply chain. Uh, if we believe in science, we have to exploit the real stability information and bring it into the design of supply chain on packaging and distribution process so we make things more easy, that the product integrity is not affected and product is uh, reached to the end user in, in good quality. Quality is a team effort built on knowledge sharing, communication, and understanding. Products in the cold chain become more sophisticated every day. As our experts revealed, Collaboration can ensure these temperature-sensitive products arrive safely, delivered around the world.